Good day, everybody. Um, today we're going to look at a K30 Air. A K30 Vario and a K30 Air are basically the same except for a small fan. Um, and we're just going to give a tour, maybe show a little bit of how to do some preventive maintenance. Uh, I have some other videos you could look at that show the micro switch job but I do want to peek it's very similar to this so we're not going to exactly do that um, all right let's get started hopper is already off and I know that uh, since we are going to go through the entire thing we are going to want to remove the motor um, so where we're going to start is by turning the K30 upside down and removing the three flathead screws, although I guess somebody could find Phillips head and put in there. Um, the three screws that hold the screen on the bottom. And notice this one's nice and clean. They don't stay that way. Coffee gets under your machine and lint gets in the screen. So um, be sure to clean that because that's where your cool air intake is coming in. So we've removed our screws and the screen. What this also does, those screws hold the three little feet on the motor into the body of the grinder. So now the motor is free and we're going to flip the grinder back right side up. I'm going to take the lid off and normally before you take the lid off you have to remove a flat tip set screw that lives in the lid. Remove the hopper gasket. Um, before you get started uh, and you'll notice that underneath the hopper gasket there are two slots with flathead screws in them that is a fine adjustment area once you are roughly calibrated you can use that space to very tightly calibrate the grinder our set screw out of the side and our hopper gasket out we will unlock the lid roll it over to it as far as it can go the coarsest position and if you just pry up usually it comes off the lid will come off you'll notice there's three little studs that go in three tiny little cutouts so that's how you know what position you got to take the lid on and off and we'll set that lid right open. The side. Uh, and we are not plugged in um, I am going to disconnect the motor harness you have to squeeze the two tabs and pull them apart they're usually not that easy, especially if you've never done that before. They will be tight when they are fresh. Um, and then we're going to remove the motor. And on the K30 Air, there is a like a grounding line that runs to the bottom of the motor, and it connects to the board that the, controls the fans. And that board can't run unless everything's connected together. But when you go to take it out, you need to remember to remove that wire. If you don't, it will pull on the board and probably break the small piece of plastic that is meant to be a tab that holds it in. Don't worry about it. It'll still work fine. The tab really doesn't hold it in anyway. Um, but it's always best if you remember to remove the wire before you pull the motor straight up and set the motor standing up on the table. Just to kind of give you the, the lowdown on everything, what I will do is remove the top ring which holds on to a decorative ring which has the uh, grind numbers and everything listed on it. But also underneath that, that ring is plastic and underneath that ring there is a, a, a metal component to it which uh, holds the display and we'll show you how to get that display out. So you remove these four screws. Oh, and in this case, underneath these four screws, there is a 10 millimeter tall hex nut and if they are loose they will spin so you sometimes have to hold them. Okay. 
once you have the screws out you can remove that top ring but there's a ribbon cable holding the display so you want to kind of be careful with it in this case it just slid right out so ribbon cable display two potentiometers um, there are set screws on the potentiometer uh, outside knobs and then there are nuts that you would have to loosen to take those off uh, and then there are the single and double dose buttons and they have plastic nuts on the inside that you would loosen in order to remove those and they all plug into this processor board over here and if you literally take the bottom row on the processor and the bottom row here and just slide everything over all the pieces kind of correspond with where they plug in um, you know if you I always suggest you take pictures and maybe even label items when you are taking things apart because you will understand yourself better than you will understand anyone else uh, the power board uh, there's there's a bottom row and then there's the display and then there is you know, let me I just want to make sure I say this right there's the power board and the power board on the K30 Air, it comes off the main power board and it plugs into the uh, the fan control board. And then the fan control board is plugged into the processor board. And the processor board is plugged into the display. And in turn, you go back down the other end of that line, it's plugged into the motor. And all these are communicating with each other. There's a little bit of a you know back and forth depending on what you're asking the grinder to do. You have a two position on and off switch and an over limit. So first thing you check, grinder stuck just goes dead. First thing you check is that over limit. Um, second thing you check is the circuit that you have it plugged into. Um, on the K30 Air, there is one 50 UF capacitor and then there is a, a rocker plate in there that holds a micro switch which is attached to the portafilter activation switch and uh, that's a little bit of a tricky job I do have a video on the peak which is very similar there's just a little difference but it's very similar uh, this shiny back side of this plate here that's underneath the fan control board is the main power board Let's see, we have, there is a, uh, that micro switch on the rocker plate back there is attached to this arm, and both this button that is mounted on the outside and the two nuts and screws that hold the micro switch onto that rocker plate are places where the factory does put some Loctite. And so if you have to take those items off, you may find it necessary to use a hairdryer or a heat gun to warm those places up. That makes the Loctite um, malleable, and then you'll be able to, to get it off. Okay, so we're going to loosen these tall nuts. doesn't take a whole lot. Um, they are putting downward pressure on this clump ring is what it's called it has all the electronics on it and once you have that loose um, if you've ever popped the sides off before then it is is kind of easy if you've never popped them off before you sometimes have to use a little oomph um, sometimes I can strike them with my palm of my hand like that and the side will pop out it lodges in to the back plate and the front plate there's a uh, gasket in there that keeps it from rattling and uh, like I said this top ring when it's tight kind of puts pressure on it to hold it all in place. Pop off both sides but in this case everything we really need to get to loudly you can see is on this right side. We have the power board 
um, held on by two screws also has it's the same screws that hold the uh, the fan control board on and then there's two screws that hold the processor board on now if you wanted to you could remove these tall nuts remove the clump ring entirely uh, you may have to cut some zip ties or you may even have to disconnect some wires so always label and take pictures uh, but then you would be able to remove the front or the back plate the back plate has the fan it has the uh, over limit and the on and off switch and the front plate has the micro switch and that micro switch you know we showed you moves back and forth on a rocker plate on the inside has a tension adjustment with a lock nut on a stud a double-ended stud that goes through the wall and holds the portafilter fork so the other thing when you are doing a job that involves you know adjusting or maybe replacing the micro switch you have to be careful not to uh, tilt the portafilter fork because if you do that the little arm that's passing through a slot can stick to one wall and you have to be very tenacious in order to um, to line that up so that it doesn't hit the wall and also is tight enough not to shift once baristas start using it again. Alright I think we'll also show this is the cable coming from the power board and it is coming around and plugging into the lower level of the um, fan control board. Then the fan control board is plugging into this far left upper level uh, plug on the processor board. And all these other parts are plugging into your controls over here and they pretty much directly line up if you were to shift them over um, with the spaces on the board. Now we went ahead and put our side plate back on, tightened up our tall nuts. We're going to put um, the display back in the, well I like to call this, it's the intermediate ring with the deco ring on the outside. And there's a little hole here for the display and all the plastic stuff has to line up in there. And then we can, because it is like no other plug on the processor board, we can pretty easily always tell where that goes. And there's two little channels in here. You see if you get them lined up, <clears throat> it slides right in. Sometimes it's a little tight, sometimes it's a little loose. And then this plug only goes in one way. So if you're having trouble, don't force it goes into the processor board <clears throat> and then you set that on the top and line up the four screws on the top sometimes if you had to loosen or tighten those four tall nuts the screw holes in the tall nuts won't exactly line up you can either sometimes lift the ring a little bit you have to do it evenly and that will allow you to have a little bit of wiggle room but what is happening is there are rods that go all the way down to the base that allow the front and back panels to slide on those and these tall nuts put a little bit of tension on those rods and the rods are so long they allow the the, the twist of the threads to bend one way or the other sometimes you have to kind of make adjustments once you have them all started I tend to just start to get them a little tight and then you go back and manually just give them that little cinch and that keeps everything tight. Move over to the motor. Um, this is the brass and aluminum adjustment ring. It is a outer brass ring 
with an inner aluminum insert that is threaded together and when you go to the right, this is righty tighty or clockwise, that is driving the uh, burr which is actually the stationary burr but it's driving it down and when you go lefty loosey or counterclockwise it's actually uh, allowing lifting that burr up. Clockwise is finer, counterclockwise is coarser and the burrs typically turn counterclockwise. So we are going to take off the adjustment ring by undoing the three screws on the brass outer ring. I never unscrew the inner aluminum cogs from the brass because after uh, regular use sometimes there's buildup or sometimes there's been a heat issue and when you take them apart you may not get them back together again. Three screws out and we want to lift straight up. Sometimes it comes right out, sometimes it's a little stuck. That means it's cockeyed. You just have to make sure you lift straight out. And what you find in there is your stationary burr and your rotary, rotary burr. And they have to be in the correct position or you will not be able to dial in. So don't forget to install your burrs correctly. The tall nut here is a 14 millimeter and I like to use something soft. In this case I'm using the soft handle of my needle nose to trap a sweeper on the rotary carrier just so I can loosen that tall nut. And if you notice it didn't take a lot. I try not to over tighten anything. I always know that I'm going to be the one back in here. Um, you may have to use a tool but this is aluminum so you have to be very careful not to leave any marks on your grind chamber materials. Um, you can usually pull up. This is a clean grind chamber. Um, cleaned this machine prior to this video. But normally there will be coffee stuck to the bottom side of your rotary carrier. And there are places on the sweepers where the coffee builds up pretty bad. And I like to brush every inch of my burrs and my grind chamber until everything is nice and smooth. And then make sure that you don't have any grounds or anything when you put it back together. Because the coffee grinds can actually cause it not to be level, which would affect your dial-in when you're on bar. We're going to take the grind chamber off. Um, there are four machine screws. They also do not need to be too tight. Just a little snug. And once you have them loose, I think I got that one. Then you can lift the grind chamber straight off. Keep track of your screws. Now, here we have our grind chamber. Here we have our motor spout. And you'll notice there's two set screws. One of these set screws is holding the spout on. We'll remove it. It's a 1.5 millimeter. I typically only just loosen. I try not to remove because those are so small you'll lose those set screws. Then we go to the next set screw. Just loosen it a little bit. This set screw is for a barrel. This little barrel or sleeve is very soft aluminum so careful with it. And it's holding the flapper in place. And in this particular model of grinder, the flapper is this small silicone piece. This is the K30 flapper. You'll notice it has a little hourglass kind of shape that's significant, and then a couple other little cuts. This is a declumper and a retention device. When they are in working order, like this one is, it can be flat. You know, the, all the parts are in line. Um, as the coffee passes through, 
they flex. They put a little bit of restrictive pressure or retention on the grind chamber, which allows for just the right amount of regrinding. And they also declump um, the coffee as it passes through. If you start to see significant clumping or spraying, then this flapper is probably, I call it the barn doors are wide open, um, and it needs to be replaced. Also, if you start having inconsist inconsistencies, excuse me, with um, shot dosage, then this spout and this area where the barrel lives have probably gotten clogged and have start, started to close up. And it'll close up and close up and a lot of pressure will build up and then it'll let a lot through. And then it'll close up and close up and pressure will build up and it'll let a lot through. So it just kind of depends on where you are on that timing of your, your portafilter. You'll be like, oh, it works okay sometimes, but then I'll get a lot less or a lot more. That's probably your flapper and your spout area needing to be cleaned. When I go to reinstall the flapper, I tend to like to do that with the, the hourglass in the 11 to 3 o'clock kind of diagonal slant position. There we go. And once I have it right pressed up against where it goes, I take the barrel, and remember that soft aluminum, you can usually find the spot where the set screw has been pressing against it, and I like to line that up. Press it back in there. And then, just slightly tighten, because you don't want to bend that little barrel. It makes it harder to get out. The spout itself, usually when it's apart, you know, after we've cleaned everything else, we, I'll clean that spout down to shiny metal. Uh, I like to press the sides of the cap together a little bit, which also causes me, when I reinstall it here, to have to push this together a little bit. And there's four holes on the lid, and there are four bumps on the spout, and you have to line them up. When you get it back together, it's nice and firm. Then it slides down in the channel, and you also tighten that, not too snugly, just barely, just barely snug, because this is all aluminum, and there's not a lot of threads there in the first place. So, okay, then you reinstall the grind chamber. Um, it would be uh, the wires coming out of the back left side, uh, the wires to the wire harness. And these would be almost parallel with you in the front, these two legs, these two feet. Put it on, line up the screw holes, and drop them in. Then, we're going to reinstall the rotary bird carrier. Trap a sweeper with something soft. Next, we're going to reinstall the brass and aluminum adjustment ring. Line up the holes.
Okay. Then uh, you want to be able to spin the uh, in aluminum insert once everything is back on. You don't want to tighten it too much, um, but you want to be able to spin that. And if you go clockwise, then you're going tighter. And what happened is I just got to the bottom where the top burr hit the bottom burr. And it makes it spin just a little bit right there. So you back off. And then you spin the burr counterclockwise while you spin the, the aluminum insert with the cogs on it clockwise. Hear that noise? That scuff? That is what we're looking for at factory zero. And I'm going to show you how to do this with a grinder plugged in, but I wanted to show you kind of what we were doing right here. Um, you will sometimes find marks already on the aluminum and the brass. Those marks were made when someone was calibrating the grinder. And unfortunately, the marks only mean something to that person, and they only mean something that one time. It is possible that every time you go in there, that the marks don't mean anything. So you kind of have to make your own, and uh, I'll try to explain that as best I can very soon. The bottom of the grinder body has three indentations that are footholds, or that's for the placement of the motor feet. And <clears throat> these are the motor feet right here. They're little shock absorbers, and they screw on. Okay, so you want to make sure if you have a problem where something's a little not level when you put it back in, you can unscrew or screw a foot in further and make it, you know, level. Um, my advice is usually to have them all the way screwed in. But you lower the motor in, being careful not to hit the micro switch wires. And then you connect the motor harness. It only goes on one way. So, all right, you tuck that up over there. Plug in the little fan cord. It's a habit of mine. Don't forget to plug that in, or the fan won't come on when we plug the grinder back in and turn it on. Then, um, we're going to go ahead and plug in our grinder. Then I'm going to turn the grinder on. Okay, the grinder's on. The display says open. And what that means is the safety switch is not depressed. Normally when the lid's on, it would be depressed. Luckily, I don't know, I think most people have a hand big enough to do this, but you can hold that down with your hand. And you want to grab. Now it says that the lid's on and you want to put your hand on the aluminum insert of the adjustment ring and you can run the grinder and that little bit of vibration is because we don't have everything put together right now and sometimes the motor spout will lean against the body spout but what we're going to do is we are going to go from burrs not touching we're going to go spin the aluminum insert clockwise until we hear a little bit and back off back off till you hear no chirping but just barely no chirping right there okay now in this case now we're going to make some marks in order to use for calibration just so happens in this case some marks lined up but they might not be the last marks that were used I'm going to make a mark on the cog and then keep on going from that cog straight off the piece of brass there so those two pieces line up. And then I'm going to look at the first cog that I just drew a little black line on and I'm going to say number one. I'm going to go to the right ten and a half cogs. So that's number one. Number two, number three, number four, number five, number six, number seven, number eight, number nine, number ten. And we're going to say, 
a half right there. Now the logic of what I am trying to do is each one of those cogs corresponds in essence with the numbering system, the grind adjustment system here on the deco ring. Zero through ten. That's eleven digits. But because our lid has a fine adjustment piece built into it, I want to be able to use that to finely calibrate. And I'm hedging my bet on the fine side. So instead of adjusting 11 cogs, I'm adjusting 10 and a half. And then we have room for adjustment after we put the lid back on. Especially, I tend to like to keep the screws that do the adjustment in the middle position if I'm getting ready to calibrate. So first we'll set those up in the middle position and come back. We loosened our screws and then positioned them in the middle of the adjustment slot and then retightened them. Now we're going to put the lid back on. There are three little studs on the lid. There are these two prongs on the adjustment piece. They are going to fit in between some of the cogs here um, on each side. Uh, there are three cutouts on the top of the intermediate ring, the metal piece. So that's where the three studs have to go down. So it makes putting on the lid pretty simple when you get used to it. And when you get it in position, if it's not dropping into place, that means those two prongs are on top of uh, the cog. So you, to get it to drop into place, you just kind of you just kind of wiggle because those pins were on top of a cog. Now, slide this all the way over to the zero position, lock it down, and then we test the grinder. That little bit of tapping right there is perfect. It means the burrs are touching, and if you want to be really on top of it you can loosen the fine adjustment piece and you just nudge that towards what would be turning counterclockwise test the grinder absolutely no noise right now tighten it back down and voila we are calibrated all right so after that don't forget to put your gasket back in. You are ready to dial in. Oh, no you're not. We forgot one thing. Turn off the grinder. Unplug it. We have to reinstall the fan and the foot screws for the motor. Now we're done. So I think that does it for the walkthrough on the K30. I hope that it's been helpful. Uh, leave some comments if there are things that you would like to see. Uh, K30 and the K30 Air, almost identical. Well, I hope everyone's doing well and uh, stay tuned for the next video from the garage. Have a good one.